partners share different types of silence. The silence followed after a great gesture that your partner did for you. The silence after sharing months, years with your partner. The silence after your partner does something nice for you, just because. These are all pleasant types of silences, but there is another type of silence. It's a Tuesday night in a two-bedroom apartment in Sofia. The night is calm, but then a slap breaks the silence. After that, there is a slam of a door, a scream, and then silence again. The creepy silence is restored, but then a life is lost in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. Since the start of the pandemic, up until May 2020, at least two women per month have died due to domestic violence. At least two women per month have lost their lives by a man that they know. Recently, a report came out by the Bulgarian government. The bottom line is, 27 women have died due to domestic violence just in 2020. I, my senior year, I knew I wanted to do a project on equality in Bulgaria. I knew that I wanted to do that, but I didn't want it to be something on feminism. In Bulgaria, feminism is kind of a dirty word and many people don't like it. So I began researching everything that I was reading, everyone that I was talking to, every piece of information, they were all leading to one and the same thing. All roads were leading to what's behind closed doors. What happens in Bulgarian households stays in Bulgarian households. The things have undoubtedly worsened due to the pandemic. As I said, 27 women lost their lives in 2020 alone. Another thing to make the problem worse is that the Bulgarian government has no official statistic on how many people suffer from domestic violence. This just reinforces the silence that surrounds the victim and carries it to the institutional levels of the country. This further deepens the problem. It reinforces the suffering of the victim and it continues the silence. The silence is also, it's a part of the victim's life. Many of the cases remain unreported. A study by the Center for Democracy in 2015 reported that 80 to 70% of the domestic violence cases stay within the family. This just exemplifies how silence is all these people have. Another thing is that this study is from 2015 and it's one of the newest that I found. And again, things have worsened during the pandemic. 27 women have died in 2020. Frustrated by all this information or also the lack of information, I decided to do a survey. Together with my advisor, we came up with 30 questions and we released a survey. I cannot say that I was shocked by, the, what, by what I was reading, but definitely seeing 505 real people answering the way that they answered is just devastating. So here are some of the findings from the survey. First of all, Bulgarians do know what domestic violence is. They do know that it's beyond bruised eyes, it's beyond broken noise, noses, it's beyond broken ribs as well. Domestic violence is feeling suffocated in your own home. Domestic violence is being humiliated by your partner. Domestic violence is being forced to have sex with your partner. Domestic violence is feeling obliged to tell your partner where you are at any moment. People do know what domestic violence is 
yet almost 80% of the respondents say that they do know a person that's suffering. These, these victims are ordinary people. They are just, they could be the woman in the supermarket, it could be the girl across the room, it could be the guy in the gym. They're ordinary people, just like you, just like me. I haven't grown up in such an abusive environment, but through my project, I decided to get involved and attempt to do something. <laughs> when I started with this, I didn't know as much on the topic. I didn't know, but by researching, I came to realize that I do know people that are suffering. I do have friends that are victims. But about how many don't I know? How many people are just suffering in silence and nobody knows about that? Another thing that is very disturbing is on the question, how old were you when you encountered domestic violence for the first time? An overwhelming majority of the people answered, I don't remember, or I don't know, or anywhere ranging from five to 12. These children came to be adults, young adults, and came to be in a relationship when they've grown up in an environment like that. Growing up in an abusive home definitely leaves a mark on a child. Some of the behaviors that psychologists have proven that children adopt are deviant behavior, anxiety, lack of sleep, repressing emotions, and adopting the behavior of the abuser or staying the victim forever and looking for one, looking for an abuser. Mostly these children that come to be adults, they unconsciously continue living the life that they have grown up with, they have grown up in. When you're a child, your home is mostly what you know from the world. The way your father speaks to your mother the way they address each other, the way they, uh, they handle conflict. That's the way you come to know human relationship at a very young age. That's all you know, and if nothing is done later on in life, that's what most probably you're gonna go to live, continue living. So how do we teach those children, those young people, something better? How do we help them be better, do better, and know better? To know better, one gets educated. What do we do from a very young age? We play and we learn. Our mission as adults, as a society, is to help ensure that young children, young adults who grow up in something like that, they have the resources to be able to do something better or even get the problem from a young age and uproot it, prevent it. I believe that education is the best prevention. Some of the things that can be done there is a positive example from Australia. Starting next academic year, in Australian schools, uh, the concept of consent is going to be taught. Something as simple but as powerful as consent can make a huge difference. And here we're not talking about sex. Consent should be taught long before there is any talk about sex. When you're young, you're more likely to absorb ideas, to internalize ideas, to get them as your own. To internalize something is to be 
acquainted with an idea, acquainted with a belief, and then you take it so much as your own that you make it a part of your belief system and make it a part of you as a human being. So something simple as consent can make the huge difference, as I said. You can have friends, family, colleagues telling you that being talked into doing something is wrong. But until you realize it for yourself, until you know for yourself why is it wrong, until you know that you can say no and still be loved, respected and cared for, you're not going to realize why being talked into is abusive and wrong. It's time that things that happen in Bulgarian household, households behind closed doors start being discussed. It's time children and young adults get educated on abusive language, on victim language. When a young person enters a relationship and before that they've been acquainted to the idea of abuser language, they're much more likely to get out of this relationship before things go south. If people are acquainted with victim behavior, with victim language, they're, they're going to feel much more comfortable believing themselves that they're actually seeing what they're seeing in a friend of theirs. They might be able to help them or at least provide some sort of support. As, a young, as young people, as a society, we often joke about red flags. But red flags are an actual thing. Abusers do have patterns. No one's gonna sweep you off your feet just by insulting you on the first date. Nobody's gonna make you fall in love with them if they argue with you the first week you meet. Some simple remarks like, oh, you've gained weight. That's a hit on your self-esteem. Oh, your friends are being so selfish, they don't deserve you at all another hit on your relationships. These are some of the examples that might not necessarily be a red flag if they happen once or twice. But more often than not, these small remarks can snowball into emotional, verbal, and even physical abuse. I believe that education is the best prevention. Children should be acquainted with what's proper and what's not in order to be able to build a much healthier, a much happier life for themselves. Education is to strengthen your voice. Education doesn't give you words. Education empowers you to raise your voice when something is wrong. And this voice, this educated voice, can help stop the silence in domestic violence. Thank you.